Hello English 10, this is Mrs. Long, and we are in the home stretch of the semester and we are concluding our play in the next couple of weeks, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, I hope that you've been enjoying it. From the journals I've seen, you've gotten a lot of the humor and there's nothing I love more than seeing a comment like, I just like this quote because it was really funny, or I really like this quote because it reminds me of how in my life, whatever is happening. and. It, it just fills me with a, a lot of uh, satisfaction to see that you're relating this play to your own lives and getting the themes that Shakespeare's poking fun at. So, good reading so far, a little bit more to go, and so in this video I just want to walk you through the last two weeks of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, the fourth session, this week starting on May 7th, is actually a fairly short session. Um, it's the same reading that you've been using, the No Fear Shakespeare or the original, and I do hope you've been grappling a little bit with the original. Um, the language, once you know what he's trying to say, isn't actually that hard. Um, I've seen quotes come in from both versions. The original is certainly more, more poetic, more beautiful, and there's a genius in the way he put together the rhyme scheme and the, the rhythm scheme, um, the meter. Uh, so I hope you're enjoying that as well. Anyway, the reading is basically the same and the literary journal for this week is very much the same as what it was in previous weeks. Um, in the discussion, same kind of thing you're going to do. You're going to um, give a response to what's happening in session four. And you can think of session four just as a summary as the hangover session. This is when everybody wakes up and says, what happened last night? Wasn't that really weird? And things start getting resolved and you find out who ends up with whom and who says, what happened last night? Who was I with? So it's kind of a fun act as everything comes together. Um, then you'll be going into the final session of Midsummer Night's Dream when we have a wonderful celebration of Theseus and Hippolyta's love as well as some other loves that develop along the way. And this is where you get to see the actors um, perform their play of Pyramus and Thisbe with the wall and the, the hole and the chink and the, the lion and everything that goes with that play. So as before, you'll be doing a literary journal for Act 5, and you'll get a chance to see a, a famous group called The Beatles perform their version of Pyramus and Thisbe, and just comment on that and share some of the humor in that. Then, for the remaining three hours of your five to seven hours that you're putting in on this course, you get a project that is basically a U project. This is based on the idea of the FedEx Day that has become popular in many businesses. A lot of businesses are starting to say people are really motivated when they have control over what they're doing, that's the autonomy piece, when they are good at it, when they have a purpose for doing it, and that motivation allows people to create some things that are original. Um, Google started off as a search engine and it became Google Drive and Google Maps and Google Earth and Google Universe and everything because of these FedEx days where people had the chance to be creative. So your FedEx day in Shakespeare is a chance to take three of your hours that you're putting in, three of the five to seven hours, and create something original dealing with Shakespeare. And this is where your talents really get to come out. If you're into anime, you can create a version of Midsummer Night's Dream that fits the anime universe. If you are an artist, you can create your own picture that captures your understanding of these plays. Lots and lots of different ideas. You can make a video if you choose, if you're technically inclined. A poster, you can scan images of that. A lesson plan, how would you teach this to second graders, or fifth graders, or eighth graders, or tenth graders? Um, you can write a song about it. If you are a performer, you can perform a video of you singing a song based on some of the, the, the play itself. A rap, you could do a text message discussion between the characters with some of the modern language that Shakespeare would never have known, BTW. Um, travel brochure, if you are going on a venture into the forest newspaper article about what happened. The possibilities are really endless. This is, this is your chance to be creative and I think it's a really good way to end the semester. Your project though, worth 100 points, should cover one of these questions, one of these four questions here in the blue. The questions are, how is language a powerful tool both for understanding and expression? Um, think about Shakespeare's tools, Shakespeare's writing. How is language a powerful tool for understanding the human nature? How is shit language a tool for expressing that commonality that we all feel, this experience with this magical thing called love? Um, thinking about your literary journal work, 
Are some comprehension strategies better than others? So most of you did a lot of quotes. I saw some predictions coming through. But are there some things you can do to enhance your reading more than others? Um, how do you know when you've read well enough? Most of you have been working with the translation. Um, think about the original version as well. How do you know if it's good enough? Answer that question. And what stays the same and what changes when you read different types of texts? Um, they change the changes in you, changes in your learning ability, um, changes that are significant in each reading that you give to a play. If you reread something, what do you get? I always say a classic is something that you can reread or review and see something different every time that you do that. And that's one reason I have enjoyed the teaching of these classics because every time I read it or teach it, I see something that I'd never seen before. Um, so that would be an example of what changes. Um, so basically the project is to spend three hours, and I know what three hours looks like, so I know what three hours doesn't look like, so don't be skimpy on it. Do your, your solid three hours and create something original. And then you're going to get the chance to share that. Um, and you may want to brainstorm with your peers first, um, but you're going to then create your final project, upload it so your peers can enjoy it as well. So that's basically it. That will take you through the rest of our scheduled time in the course. And so that's it's two weeks worth of work. The first, work, the first week, the unit four, is due on the 13th. And then the final session, session five, is due on the 20th. Now we don't actually finish, till, finish school until the 28th, um, but I'll be giving you a bit more instructions on that final week in a little bit. So continue to enjoy Midsummer Night's Dreams and see me with questions. Um, Again, you're in the home stretch. Don't give up yet. A little bit more to do. Um, but it's been nice working with you, and I do hope that you're enjoying Midsummer Night's Dream. Have a great week.